so the first question uh, in this mock session is let's say you uh, you log into pwa any user external user and account is getting logged so how we can unsus unsuspend that account that user automatically like manually we know we can go to a private our client and we can activate from the private our client manual steps but if you wanted to do it automatically let's after certain time the account should get unlocked or unsuspend in vault how we can do that anyone Owen? No. Okay. Uh, is it possible or, or anyone have heard about this uh, thing if, if we can unlock the account automatically? Yeah, Neil, uh, I have heard about it. Like we can change the settings in the board, but I don't know how. Okay. Okay. So uh, let's discuss the all the questions one by one. And, and at the end of the session, I will explain each and every question later on. Okay, moving to uh, next question. What is NLA, and why we disable the NLA? Uh, NLA is network level authentication. Okay. Yeah, we will disable it for uh, uh, communication with the other components mm -hmm. to cyber. Uh, sorry, communication for Can other components to the. Okay, not exactly. Anyone? Uh, I think we disable it to uh, disable the remote connection from the other uh, other systems. Uh, no. Um, for RDP connection. Uh, Okay, where we disable it? Uh, we have to disable it from server end. No, no, uh, on which server? Which server? Which server? Target server. Target server. Okay. To get the RDP enabled. Mm. Means to log in that server from the RDP. Okay, if NLA is enabled, so can't we log into that server? Let's say NLA, NLA is enabled on both the sides. So, can't you log into that server using RDP only? Uh, connection not established, I think, NLA if enabled. Okay, so let's say you have configured the NLA settings, like what are, what are the configuration required? So, will it not support NLA then? Uh, you understand like uh, uh, everyone what is NLA and yes we disable from the server manager there is a, a parameter from where we allow that remote desktop and we uncheck that network level authentication okay so moving to our next question what is uh, PSM connect user and how you can connect to PSM manually using the PSM connect user. So PSM connect user is responsible to make the connection between Bolt and PSM server. Okay. And how we can log into uh, PSM manually mm -hmm. using the PSM connect. If you have credentials, means we can directly uh, log into the target server using this PSM connect user. Okay. Not the target, to the PSM. Yeah. yeah. If you have credentials, please, we can directly able to log into the uh, like uh, okay. web, web, web form side, right? web page. Okay. So let's say uh, you log into PVWA and you are connecting to a to an account using any account. So whenever you try to hit that connect, automatically you get a get a pop up like uh, your uh, PSM privilege session manager responded something like you are getting in starting itself. It's not giving any window. 
you are just hitting the connect button downloading that rdp file and when you just connect it it will it will give a, a all of a sudden your connection gets uh, disconnected so now you want to troubleshoot the issue why it is getting disconnected and you want the uh, psm connect user password then how to log in manually how you because you will be doing step by step to log how because connection is uh, failing in the starting end itself we are not getting any message like you are not being recorded before it it's failing so how you will get the password how you will log into uh, using that password inside in to P psm So near it's a locally user, uh, you know, created where whenever we install PSM server. So we cannot get the password, but we can reset the password okay. for PSM connect user. Okay. So let's say uh, you don't have the permission to reset the password. So how you will get that password? Mm, not sure about that. Okay. Anyone? Okay. Uh, moving to our next question. Okay. What is the use of connection component timeout under your under your connection components? Like when you are uh, making a connector, let's say with the using auto IT or web form, you just need to define a, a connector name like PSM hyphen something something. So you define some uh, connection component timeout also. So why we use that connection component timeout? So in the uh, in the con connection component timeout we you know usually provide the time so whenever a user or uh, will try to connect or try to make a session so it's you know, it's a default time given there like uh, if it's 10 seconds so uh, you know connection will wait to connect to the target server until 10 seconds if it doesn't get any response or due to any network latency so you know it will show the timeout error and the default timeout is 20,000 seconds, milliseconds. milliseconds, not the 10. Uh, not exactly. Okay, uh, anyone? You might have used this uh, uh, functionality. You might have increased and decreased this timeout. Yes, yes, we increased while we created PSM connector. We increased yep. it to uh, yep. up to 60,000. Yep. So what's the exact purpose? Why we increase it? So uh, if there is, you know, some latency in the network, so we, uh, our connection can wait for uh, okay. more, uh, more time. So we have some action timeout also. Action timeout. So then what's the use of action timeout? No idea. Okay. Uh, anyone? There is a time for uh, take the connection, like uh, for example, 20 seconds are there. Mm -hmm. If it is, we are not done anything in the 20 seconds, it will it will disconnect it, I think. Yep, yep. Uh, partially correct. So, yep, okay, we'll discuss at the end of this. Okay. So, moving to our next question. What is the use of app locker and why we use it in CyberArk PSM? app locker is a you know windows function we can enable it at the uh, server side and basically you know uh, to run the cpm plugins uh, there are separate file for every type of component like uh, for windows these are dll and for linux uh, there are some you know um, 
I believe PM terminal files. So in app locker, if you know, we want to run any specific application and, and that DL file, DLL file is not available at that server. So we can make the setting uh, changes in the app locker. Okay. And you said for CPM plugin. So it's not related to CPM plugin. I think it's related to PSM. PSM, uh, I, yes. Uh, for I think production environment, we limitize the use of application. That's why we use the app locker. Okay. To uh, limit the number of applications you can uh, start in the session. So you put app locker rules for PSM settings. Okay, and how it will affect your connection? So let's say you have installed something on your uh, PSM server. So how you will and how you will allow in app locker, otherwise it will block it. Let's say you have installed a Microsoft Edge on your PSM server and you are making a connector using Microsoft Edge instead of using Chrome. So if you are just taking a connection from PSM, so it's giving an error like something any like it's not allowed or app locker is uh, blocking this or this uh, policy is not enabled something like that no idea. i think the rules are set by I know the concept, but I have not done it. So it, you can specify the rules and which users and groups you can allow uh, to run the PSM sessions. Yep, yep. Yeah. Correct. But how to, let's say, for you might be installing new, new applications to make the connectors or some DLL files or some .cmd files. So how you will just allow them? Okay. Okay, so next question is how Vault database is read and like how we uh, the modification or changes is being done from PWW because when you log into PWW, you directly connect to the target machine or you just directly change the password by clicking a button. But something is happening in the database, correct? Because everything is stored on the Vault machine. Vault is the centralized database. So your PWW, CPM, PSM, every component just communicate to Vault and retrieve the all required uh, configuration and then they just perform their operational stuff. So how the uh, that database is read by PWW or PSM or CPM and how the changes are being done on that database? And what is the database used by Vault? MySQL database and uh, AES256 is using uh, Sorry, read and MySQL database. Okay. My uh, okay, and how your uh, database is read and uh, written uh, from? It's using AES uh, 256 okay. advanced standard encryption. That is the encryption. Using that encryption, your data is encrypted, so it's not reading it. It's just uh, just uh, decrypt uh, just encrypting that data. Okay. Anyone? No. Uh, I think in report section we can download and read the database. When no, no. Database means anything you are doing on the PWW. Let's say you yeah. log into PWW. You are creating an account. So something is written on the database only. Something yes. is going on the database only. So anything you perform in PWW in private art line. So that is getting stored on the vault database only. Let's say in your mobile phone, you have some uh, disk, your, you have some internal memory. So anything you will install or something, it will full your internal memory only. Okay. 
Yeah. Uh, I know the which service is responsible for that, but I know uh, don't know the exact method how it's written right. Okay. The uh, service is con logic container is responsible of yes, doing a writing in the whole database. Yes, correct, correct, correct. So this is the logic container service, which is making your uh, data read and write for PWA, CPM, and PSM. If that service is down, your PWA, CPM, PSM will not be functioning. Okay, absolutely correct. So, out of six, five one. <laughs> okay. Uh, moving to next question. When I you think uh, it's very uh, we have to thoroughly go. I have to thoroughly go through your documents and your videos to get the <laughs> answer. Because yep, yep. Many, uh, many things I might have discussed in the uh, in document also. Uh, yeah, we have, if we them. haven't done the practice by our own, then I don't think so we are able to answer these questions. Yep, because yep. they are not straight forward. So. <laughs> in the interview also, the you questions uh, will be like uh, in same way you you can expect. Okay. So uh, next question is. When you log in using LDAP authentication to CyberArk, so how you are provisioned to uh, PWW? How you are pro provisioned to CyberArk? What is the workflow? So the workflow is, you know, uh, the user uh, must have the member of those four groups. I mean, one of those four groups users, uh, safe managers, auditors, and administrators. Okay, and how your vault will come to know, like, yes, this user is a, a part of those four groups. So host entry, so we will just do host entry, you know, vault. So, you know, a wind user. So through wind user, server, server will recognize that, you know, that is the authenticated user, try to log in. Yep, yep. So what will be the workflow then? And also it is the bar group we need to... Host host entries are only required to establish the connection between CyberArk and AD. So That's we will be doing um, directory mapping for the particular OU. It's already done. You have already done the LDAP integration. The workflow, workflow, how he will is authorizing. Let's say you go to airport, you will just show your ID. Then only they will allow you to enter in in uh, premises. So similarly, mm -hmm. how a user will be uh, allowed to enter to PWA? Through, through PWA gateway user. Okay, then what will what's the workflow? If someone is asking, like, can you please explain the workflow? For workflow is for it is PWW gateway and it will request goes to like a, a vault internal safe. Okay. And then like it, it will go to from the internal safe, it will go to the bind account. Yep. And then and from the bind account, it will search for the a particular uh, uh, user ID or AD ID, whether it is integrated with AD or not. Okay. Well, it means domain ID. Okay. Uh, from uh, it will search and it will um, uh, retrieve that user ID and uh, it will log in the through user ID and password. Uh, partially correct. Means like uh, that the user ID uh, are created in any of them like four groups are there, right? Okay. From uh, from four groups, it will uh, check whether it is that particular user are available or not in the AD server. Okay. So that uh, it will uh, log in the PBW. Uh, so, so bind user will allow that uh, user to log into PBW. Yes. Yes. Uh, no. Okay. Uh, anyone? So bind user will confirm only the existence, like this user is authenticated one or not. Uh, what the PBWA gateway user will authenticate to user to log in into PBWA. Uh, 
Yep. Correct. So bind user is just checking that yes, this user exists or not on AD and that user is a part of those four groups or not. That's it. Rest of the things is done by your PWA gateway user. That will provision the user in CyberArk. Okay. So uh, moving to our next question. Okay. What is allow mapping drive and how to enable it for the every connection component? So allow mapping drive uh, is used to you know if you if you want to uh, uh, share some data from our local machine to the target server so we can map this drive and uh, it will be like like a shared drive available in the target server which drive and will be mapped then which drive will be mapped i'm not so near about that but uh, the uh, the setting will be at the end of platform i no. Okay, so you allow the map, uh, allow mapping drive. So, yep, that is correct. It is used to map to your target machine. So, which drive is getting mapped and from where to enable it? So I'm not sure, but for sure we will be providing some, you know, local machine path to the, that drive. Okay. How to provide? Anyone? Okay. So moving to our next question. Okay, so there is a critical account and client wanted to rotate the password of that account after every uh, 10 minutes. So how you can configure it like whenever anyone use that account. So after every 10 minutes, the password should rotate. We can enable OTP policy one time password. Okay, then will it be uh, password will be changing after 10 minutes then not the 10 minutes uh, if we you know enable this policy whenever that connection will be disconnected cpm will rotate the password okay and it will rotate the password after after this connection is disconnected i'm not sure how to configure the uh, particular time like default time will be 60 minutes, one hour, like minimum validity period. Yep, correct. So, that which parameter we need to change? Yep, correct. So, we can decrease that to 10, 10 minutes. So, it will yeah. change the password after a session is disconnected and it will change after 10 minutes. Okay. Okay. So, uh, this is only OTP policy, or we, we have to use both the in combination, like a check in, check out, and this OTP. Uh, only this. OTP is fine. Okay. Okay. Moving to our next question. Okay. So let's say when you log in uh, to a target machine using PSM, like you logged into uh, PWA and you are just hitting the connect button and you logged into the target machine and you are not doing anything on that machine and after uh, 10 to 15 minutes you your screen got logged so how how we can just fix that issue so that screen is not getting logged whether you are not doing anything on that machine the session is not ideal the screen gets logged but anything you are uh, doing in the background that is running fine on the same machine but the screen saver is get locked. So it must we have some policy on the target server. Okay, what policy? We have we, uh, screen for, for the ideal, ideal time we can increase it. Arrange we can. 
ideal uh, ideal time uh, time is 2 uh, days so is it it is this something let's say you logged into that machine and you started a script okay that script is running but uh, that script is running in the background and you are not doing apart from that anything but still your machine is getting logged you 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 get this, just like our uh, company's laptop if you are not doing 10 uh, anything on your company's laptop for more than 10 to 15 minutes it will lock that screen again you need to type your password or you need to use some pin or your uh, thumb print to log in back so same here okay anyone i think in pxm pxm connection component uh, we need to set parameter and like never uh, no it is something uh, from the uh, your policies only yeah related to pxm policy not from the connection component side mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, moving to our next question. Okay. So you have 10 servers in a cluster. So let's say a cluster has been built and inside that cluster there are 10 servers. And there is one account which is which have access on all those 10 servers. So password of that account should be same. so you need to uh, onboard the all the servers in cyberark and with the same account you need to connect to every uh, what we say every server but let's say if you are changing the password of one account so same password should be replicated to other nine otherwise you won't be able to log in it will allow login for only one account only rest of the nine will not be allowing the login because password must be same so how you can manage the password and password also to be managed by cyberark so how to manage the password so the password remain same for all the servers and because account is same only so how we can configure this but it is created locally right yes yes it's a unix machine because in domain it's totally fine we have one account you can rotate that password but still let's say uh, because you need to onboard the uh, all the 10 accounts separately because address is different correct there are 10 address now in a cluster so you need if you are onboarding the account you need to give the that let's say admin is the account then address is different then you need to provide the password password is same so because account is same so but address is different addresses are different so how we will sync the password because if let's say cpm is changing the password of one account one server so how it will be replicated to rest of the account because password must be same if cpm has changed the password of first when it will go to second it will uh, give a different password so your connection will will not be working then Mm -hmm. Associate with the. Uh... Not sure near about that, but I'm just guessing. We can own the replication on all the nine servers. but replication also will change the password uh, will not replicate so local accounts password would not be replicated Isn't how you will how you will replicate it
uh, through DR service? This is the target machine. So how the DR service will work work there? No, I'm, I'm not sure about this. Is uh, there any association with the parent cell council? Uh, sorry? Is there any uh, parental concept, whether it is one server is? No. Okay. Next question is, CPM is trying to change the password of an uh, domain account. And sometime it's able to change the password correctly. And sometime it's failing. Like today, it uh, successfully changed in the midnight or after one day, it failed. Again, it's able to change the password. And it gives something error, unable to connect to uh, this DC. So what could be the issue here? Because sometimes it's working, sometimes not. Yeah, go there. So, you know, uh, it's about RODC, read-only domain controller. So in, uh, at AD ends, there are few uh, in the infrastructure there are some dcs and they use some rodc so it might be you know in the second attempt cpm is trying to correct on on rodc so in that case you know that is the read only domain controller only so the cpm won't be able to change the password on that so in that case we will be getting this error okay so how we can fix it so we can you know uh, <clears throat> Under CPM settings, we can just provide the main DC address there. So every time when whenever it will try where, to change the where password. C, where CPM setting? No, I'm not sure about the setting. But this is how you know we can remedy this problem. Okay, not partially. The uh, error uh, explanation is correct. Solution is not correct. Anyone? Okay, so moving to our next question. Okay, so does CyberArk has a capability to identify which is RODC and which is a writable DC? So this is related to the above question. So we can just define the address of the writable DC. That's no, how no, no. you have integrated your domain main mm -hmm. domain so how can cyberarc identify this is a, a rodc or this is a writable dc no it, it cannot uh, identify okay why it cannot identify no idea we can only remedy this problem by uh, supplying the writable DC address to the CPM. Okay, how you will supply that? The same answer. I mean, I, I'm not sure about the setting where I, I have to change that setting in the CPM, but uh, if we provide the writable DC address, then uh, it will only you know point to the writable DC. It won't go to the RODC. Okay. Okay. So let's say uh, you have your Active Directory. So Microsoft has that capability to let's say you are using some Microsoft other product, uh, Microsoft uh, Windows Defender. So they that component that uh, product has the capability to identify whether this is a, a RODC or a writable DC. So on domain controller itself, there is a something, uh, locate something is there. I forgot the name, locate finder. And that is the capability of your windows. So with that, like your Microsoft product can identify because mostly uh, AD is being installed. We use the Microsoft AD only, mostly in every organization you will find. Yes. So, yes. so your Microsoft products can uh, just have those compatibilities to identify whether it's a uh, RODC or writable DC. 
if they are facing this situation just like cyber arc they will just bypass that rodc they will not connect to it they will connect to right table dc and i forgot that setting name it's there on your domain only something locate finder or something okay uh moving to our next question i don't remember how many questions i have taken okay okay the question is you are uh, trying to change the password of a, of an account but cpm is failing to change the password and it gives an error password policy doesn't match how we can uh, fix this issue So it could be the reason uh, the password complexity or the target machine and the CPM and so those are uh, those both are different. So we can ask uh, from the specific team what password complexity they have on their server, and we can make the changes at the CPM ends. Okay. So let's say uh, if I say after uh, five or six days, CPM is able to change the password. But after changing the password again, it's give uh, again it gives the uh, same error. Might be sync issue. Ni like a server level password is and a cyber arc level password is different. No, no, it's able to change. Let's say uh, CPM is able to change the password after five days. Uh, when uh, on fifth day it changed the password but when you are again trying to change the password same day it's failing but after five days again uh, cpm is able to change the password there, there, there is a um, uh, policy is there like a uh, password edge uh, yep correct we can say that password edge we can put it the policy one day two day three day like that yes yes correct so there is a policy on the uh, target machine minimum password edge so if you want to rotate the password on daily basis that should be set to zero otherwise it will not allow you to change the password uh, if you have let's say you have defined 5 days so it will try to change the password uh, uh, only once in in those 5 days so if you want to rotate the password again you need to wait for again 5 days okay i think this is the last question yep how cpm uh, changes the password of the uh, windows based account and which command it uses to change uh, if this uh, let it use yep yep go ahead go on let use command is to be used to change the password for windows okay and how cpm connects to windows cpm to connect by the uh, that account how it will connect because let's say if i say just uh, log in to facebook you will open the browser and you will log in but how cpm is going to the windows sarai yes please <clears throat> so firstly you know uh, it will check the policy id cpm whenever we will try to make the connection manually uh, or cpm is trying to log in on any rdb session so it will check the policy id and then the related C cpm plugin cpm is trying to rdb no cpm is won't take the rdb your psm is for rdp okay so firstly cpm will go to app, uh, uh, will look for the application uh, sorry app id and then the cpm plugin related uh, related plugin and after that it will make the connection how it will make because uh, like as i said like it's a windows only like cpm identify yeah uh, this is a windows account i should log into okay. it so let's say if cpm identify this is a, a unix account so how i will log into it a same so the process, to... process will be same like uh, pbwa app user will fetch the password for the psm connect user 
and then it will make the connection bolt and PSM server and then PSM gateway user will fetch the password for the target server. That is for your PSM, but for CPM, there is nothing related to your PWA or uh, PWA gateway user. Okay. TCP matches the prompt file and process file. Uh, so that is not for RDP, I think. Yeah, that Processor is for your Unix. 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 Yes. Okay, so if I I will be the interviewer, <laughs> no one would you have passed. Us. <laughs> <laughs> no, no one would have passed this interview. And to be very frank, uh, these questions are not uh, that much hard. If you know the if you know the operations also very very well, or till basics also, you can easily uh, crack this. This is not something. Uh, yeah, let's say out of 15 also if you if you would have given the uh, five or six answer correctly then also i would have passed you i know like there are few settings which we don't remember i also uh, don't remember some of the settings but some of the questions like your third one first i i uh, first two i can say like this is uh, something we don't uh, usually go into but third question and then fourth also let it be but fifth fifth also you must know about this app looker okay sixth also let it be but seventh also it should you know uh, this correctly ninth also ninth one i think ninth you did uh, you uh, given the answer correctly and for this uh, 10 and 11 also and uh, this also 12 also explanation of the error was correct but not the solution and yes these last two question also like 14 was correct but this 15 so at least uh, if you if you uh, every anyone have uh, given five to six answer correctly i would definitely would have selected you okay so uh, let's discuss uh, the every question one by one so how you can automatically uh, unsuspend or activate a user so there is a parameter if you will see in it in your dbpalm.ini file so there is a parameter user user lockout uh, in minutes so there is a parameter and by default it is disabled it will be something equal to minus one minus one means disabled so if you are just uh, giving a time like uh, five minutes or ten minutes and automatically it will unlock the account if any account is getting uh, suspended so it will unlock it so that is a one parameter which you need to specify in your dbpalm.ini and you will find by default you will find that parameter it's there but that is disabled you just need to enable it so that's one uh, parameter related to just how to unsuspend the user okay second the, is so this is for a lo local accounts for a domain yeah account. yeah every because when you log into pwa it will create your image in the vault whether you are a local or whether you are a what we say the external so you have image you might have seen like how you free up the license so let's say if i say like uh, uh, free up free the some license so what you can do you can go to private our client you can delete that user and when that user will log in again, then he will get that uh, uh, that account created automatically again in private or client. So generally, this setting is enabled by default, or uh, what kind of uh, you know? Uh, As I said, like this is disabled, not enabled. You need to enable. So what, it what is want. advisable to put this disabled or enable? Uh, disabled only because let's say if uh, someone is uh, someone gets your password and he keep trying to log into your PWA. So after uh, your five wrong attempt, your account will be suspended. But let's say it is getting uh, auto uh, activated after 10 to 15 minutes, then the uh, that person can again try to uh, connect so that's why it is not uh, advisable but you can still if you want you can do that but that's why cyberarc doesn't uh, enable it by default it's uh, deactivated uh, disabled 
okay moving to our next question what is nla and why we disable it so nla is network level authentication so generally why we disable the P, uh, for the psm because we don't want uh, let's say if you want to establish the connection so what will happen first you need to authenticate to your network first like your user id should be authenticate to your network then it will go to your uh, the uh, target machine so generally we don't have that uh, functionality we don't use that functionality why to authenticate to network why to have an extra uh, thing in between but still uh, if let's your client says we want to do it so there are settings you need to do on the server level i don't remember those settings but there are settings which you can do and you can allow this network level authentication so first your account will authenticate to network then only your connection will be established to the target machine what do you mean by uh, authenticate to the network is, is network it... layer company's network let's say how you log in to uh, let's say uh, you might be using some vpn to connect to your uh, client's network or some uh, third party citrix wvd something you must be using correct so you are authenticating to your company's network so, so it's not been done by uh, the windows server it will be done by some net yeah network. third party you can say third party you are you, you might be using some vpn okay. so yeah let's say if you wanted to uh, connect to a client network because client generally won't provide you the access to your uh, uh, company's base machine either you, you you will be using some citrix or wvd or aws workspace or some vpn you first you need to connect to your vpn then only it will allow to connect to your uh, pwa or other uh, servers so similarly nla is same like you need to first authenticate yourself to the network yeah this is the valid id then it will allow your further connection it's the same thing where we log in into our uh, organizations vdi uh, first we go to the uh, not exactly not exactly because that's a alag, uh, that's a different uh, you can say okay uh, third party you are using for that vdi that's uh, your virtual desktop and i think that is provided by your microsoft i think okay okay third question is psm connect user so partially you were correct psm connect user is used for the your uh, like connecting to the psm so when you just hit the connect button so your uh, pwa gateway user will fetch the password of your uh, psm connect user only not sorry uh, your psm app uh, sorry pwa app user sorry god can you pwa app user will fetch the password of your psm connect so let's say uh, if you wanted to log in manually and you don't have the reset permission also on that account so you might have seen when you install the psm so when you log into pwa by default you will see psm connect and psm admin connect are there in your pwa if you have seen that so you can right, copy right. the you can copy the password from there why to reset the password okay from the vault server right uh, yeah from uh, either from private client or from pwa it's there when you will click on the show password if you have that uh, you if you are an administrator you can get the password and then using that password how to log in first just take the rdp to the psm and from the psm again you need to take the rdp and then you need to use your psm connect user okay just find out the psm connect user and then we can uh, copy or show the password yes there. yes yes correct you might have seen in your pwa i think uh, when you log into pwa by default you will see psm connect and psm ad admin yes, connect yes. after installing the psm we are doing it for the other uh, privilege accounts but not done for this PSM. yeah yeah okay so but what that but how how we will make this manual connection manual means you are taking the rdp you got the password take the rdp how you RDP take from where from uh, psm only from what you will do open the uh, login to psm uh, uh, open the mstsc or uh, remote desktop connection by searching and just provide the psm ip only there and when okay. it asks for the username and password 
then just provide yes. your PSM connect only. Okay. Uh, manually means like direct access or what? Uh, near? Yeah, the direct access. Like, uh, your, let's say your Through cyber attack is down. Server. Yeah. Let's say your cyber attack is down. And I want you to log into a uh, jump server. So you will take a RTP from uh, your machine to that. Right, right. So Not you remember right. how you log into with the shadow user. Same thing. Okay. Manually. So why we use this? This is for your troubleshooting. So when you just hit the connect button and after hitting the connect button, then uh, it will ask you for connect or something. RDP file will be downloaded. But after you just hit the connect, it will it is giving you some error and your window is getting closed automatically. So which means you will go step by step. You will check your PSM connect user is fine or not. Then you will move to your next PSM shadow user and rest of the uh, user you will see. So you must know the workflow. Then only you will be able to troubleshoot that issue. So let's say you find out like uh, your PSM connect user is not uh, fine. So you can sync the password. You can uh, locally reset the password on the Windows machine. If you don't have the access, ask the uh, Windows uh, team. They will reset the password and they will share the password with you. Then just update the password in your vault. Like just uh, click on change and it will give you like three option and use the third option change password in vault and then restart your PSM service. Okay. Yep. So that manual connection we will be using to check the PSM connect user whether it's working fine or yep. not to making the connection with so PSM server. You need to uh, go step by step. So just remember when you hit the connect button and automatically your session is getting closed. Otherwise you might have seen if you click on the connect button it will show you the slash PSM connect when it is taking the connection. If it is going to till there, so which means your PSM connect is healthy, but it is giving the error prior to it, which means something issue with your PSM connect only. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, use of connection timeout, so it was partially correct. So this timeout is specially uh, for your PSM to wait until your, let's say you are using a browser. You want the browser to open. So your PSM will wait to, uh, to wait for the PID. So it will generate some ID, your that uh, connection, like your edge is getting uh, invoked or your Chrome is getting invoked. Your PSM will wait for that time, for that process to end. Then it will just uh, start its uh, functioning like it will get that PID and it will just uh, record that session. So that is for your connection component timeout. And by default, this parameter is 20,000 uh, your milliseconds and you will find this parameter under your connection component. If you will go to administration tab, then options, then connection components. And there you have several components, PSM hyphen something something and lots of components are there connection components and there you will find this uh, settings. So we increase and decrease depending upon your like let's say your uh, browser you have some heavy application. So that is taking some time to load. So you can just increase that time out. Okay. Okay. App locker. So this was also uh, partially correct and app locker is correct. It is used for allowing some application and blocking the application on the PSM machine. So this is a Microsoft feature, but how you will allow and uh, uh, block it. So if you will see in the uh, PSM component, uh, when you install the PSM, so when you will go to the, uh, I think it's there in the uh, PSM, like C program file 86, cyber PSM, and there you will see some hardening folder. So in hardening folder, you will find a file PSM configuration dot XML. So let's say you have installed an edge. So edge on your PSM server. And now you want to whitelist that edge. So how to whitelist? You just need to get the uh, exe path of your edge, like on which path your edge has been installed. And that path you need to provide in your app locker dot XML file. You can edit that in a notepad. And there are lots of files will be there by default. So you can just add under that and there is a syntax like you need to give the name of that file like exe 
and the path of that file where that has been installed and then you just need to save that file and run the powershell uh, there is a script app locker uh, configure dot uh, configure dot ps ps1 something powershell script is there so in the same folder you need to run that script automatically it will whitelist that you uh, that exe path so that is for app locker that's why we use the app locker uh, for whitelisting and blocking the uh, applications which you want uh, for blocking the application we remove that path or there is an, another option to blocking uh, the path so if you are not providing that path in the app locker which means it's blocked your app locker will not allow that uh, to run uh, means like we have already allowed uh, we need to block that one so we need to remove that path yes right? yes remove That's it fine. yep and then after removing it just uh, run the uh, powershell script again so it will apply then Uh, what power cell script how, how many uh, applications we can do for the app like or is any limit or? no no there is no limit you can whitelist anything but on psm server we generally don't whitelist anything because it's are the uh, one one of the critical component generally we will whitelist your auto it dot exe your chrome your edge and your internet explorer and some of the other files like related to your uh, psm components you have some uh, your RDP client, your SSH client, those are the inbuilt connector, those EXE, that will be there by default in that app locker. Yep. Okay. Okay, so the uh, this answer was correct, like uh, wall database is read using your logic container service only. And if that is down, your PSM, your CPM, your uh, PWA will not be working. They will just, uh, Give an error. Okay. Okay. So when you log in using LDAP authentication, how you provision the cyber? So this was also uh, correct. Like when you just try to uh, select the LDAP authentication and you will provide your username and password. First, your PWA gateway user will go to your uh, Vault internal safe because in Vault internal safe, you have your LDAP configuration files. And from there, your bind account, uh, bind account will query to AD, and it will look for whether uh, this account belong, this account exists, and it belongs to any of those four uh, groups, like the groups which you have uh, used for LDAP integration, your vault admins, your auditors, safe managers, and users group. After getting that confirmation, then it will just pass that information to that PWA. Uh, your gateway user and then your PWA gateway user will provision that user to CyberArk. Uh, means it will allow the login to PWA. So that's the your uh, workflow of your uh, LDAP authentication. Okay. Okay. Uh, what is allow mapping uh, drive how to enable it for every connection component so the it was uh, the answer was also partially correct this is used to uh, as, like map your uh, drive to the target machine so your let's say you are logging from your vdi or aws or citrix so on citrix you will be having some disks like your c drive or d drive so that will be mapped to your target machine from where you are taking the connection. So you let, let's say you are taking the connection from your base machine only and it is allowed. So your base machine uh, disk will be your drive will be just mapped to the target machine. Because you need to transfer the file or you need to download the file. Otherwise you how let's say uh, if it is not mapping your local drive. So how you will download that file it should have your local drive only so from where you are taking the connection that drive will be mapped to that target uh, the target uh, server and how you can enable it if you will go to the administration tab then options where you have your connection components in under the user parameter only you have one parameter allow mapping drive if you are making making it uh, yes so which means your uh, drive will be mapped if you are making it no so which means drive is not mapped and by default 
this is disabled for some of the connection component you will find this is disabled and for some of the connection it is already enabled by default so you can enable and disable from that your administration tab you mean to set the target machine right uh, target machine in drive not the target machine your local drives is getting mapped to the target machine like you have taken the connection to a target server and you want to transfer the file to that target machine from your base machine to the target machine so just like your uh, vmware if you have seen like we have mapped the drive our base machine drive to the vmware so if you want to transfer some files you can easily transfer same way in the psm component also it will transfer that it will uh, map your local drive to the target server connection so for say we have you know <clears throat> two to three drives in my local machine so all the drives will be mapped no, to the no, target all, server no all only c drive is mapped okay yep local you, you mean the where the psm has been installed local means from where you are taking the connection let's say you log into vdi let's say you are taking uh, you are uh, log into vdi and in vdi you open the browser and you log into pw so your local will be your vdi disk so that will be mapped to your target uh, server from where you are taking the connection okay and another question there is a critical account so this was also correct you can uh, set up that otp uh, policy and after let's say if you want to change the after 10 minutes 15 minutes so in the platform there is a parameter minimum validity period something and if you by default the value is 60 minutes so you can change to 10 or 15 as per your requirement so when you disconnect the session so after that uh, many minimum validity period uh, let's say 10 minutes so it will change the password after 10 minutes your cpm will change it so that is your uh, otp policy one time password policy okay when you log in to a target server using psm and after 15 minutes so there are two things one is your screen saver if you might have seen so screen saver if you are enabling it or disabling it so for psm connect user generally when we harden the psm so generally we allow the uh, screen saver for your psm connect because your psm connect will be uh, helping in the connection purpose but let's say you don't want to uh, use this screen saver for every connection you can uh, simply disable it so that that is one parameter another parameter on the machine on the target machine you have machine in in uh, connectivity something is parameter is there machine inactivity or i forgot that name in connectivity something so by default that value is 15 minutes 900 seconds so if you will disable it so automatically your this uh, screen will not be get locked so they that uh, parameter you can set it and if let's say if a server is a part of domain and if you are using the domain group policy so you can reach out to the respective team they will disable it for that particular server or they can just create a separate uh, gpo for that particular server okay uh next question like you if you have 10 uh, servers in a cluster and you want the password should be same so have you heard about the uh, group platform anyone have heard about the group platform no so there is a group platform if you will go to your platform management you will find something sample uh, group platform so that is basically for such task only you can what you can do you can duplicate or you if you want you can use the same so you when you onboarded that account so what you need to do you need to just uh, if you have seen there is a reconcile account and logon account parameter is there just below you will have that create a group so there you can just create a group and give some name so onboard all those 10 accounts and on all 10 accounts you need to use the same group same uh, group platform 
so whenever cpm will change the password of one account same password will be replicated like will be uh, synced to rest of the accounts so using the group platform we can achieve this if you haven't seen just if you will go to login to your pwa go to platform management there you will see a sample group platform so we'll check that okay okay cpm is trying to change the password the explanation was correct uh, why we are getting this error but one thing one question one more question from where cpm is picking that uh, address like cpm must be picking the address and then it's trying to connect to that address from where it is getting that address from pwa yes correct from where that account is onboarded how you onboard mm -hmm. an account you provide the username your address your uh, password etc so cpm is picking the address from there only so let's say if uh, cpm is trying to connect to that domain and sometime it connect to rodc it is failing to change the password because read only domain controller nothing can be updated because those such domains are only used for reading the data only whereas you have writable dc if cpm is connecting to writable dc it is able to change the password so in that situation what we can do we can ask the ad team to create a dns and in that dns they should have only the writable dc list not the uh, any of the rodc shouldn't be there so they should have only writable dc uh, ip address added so you need to onboard that every account every domain account with that new D dns which you have got from your ad team so now cpm will uh, go to that dns and now that dns have all uh, writable dc only so it can connect to any of the dc now that uh, cpm will not face that issue because there is no rodc under that dns so in that way this issue will be fixed okay so you you are saying like uh, before onboarding the account we need to get that dns from the ad team yep and for every domain account onboarding you just need to use the dns only otherwise cpm will again have that issue Okay. Yep. Okay. Does Cyberdark has a capability to identify? No, it doesn't have that capability. Only this capability will be uh, like your uh, mostly Microsoft products will be having that capability to identify whether it's a RODC or a writable DC. Otherwise, it would have uh, already identified here itself. CPM will not uh, fail to change the password. so cyberac cannot doesn't have that capability to identify okay okay uh next question is you are trying to change the password uh, this was also correct like uh, you you can set that there is a minimum password age on the target server if you are making by default uh, i think the value is 24 i think so you need to change that value if you want to rotate the password on daily basis so that value you need to set zero then only your cpm will be able to change the password but if that value is one day or two days or three days so cpm will not be able to change the password uh, like more than once in a day so after three days let's say by default that policy is three days so after three days only it will be able to change that password so by default we generally make that policy uh, zero only and that is taken care by your uh, ad team only so in that case the on the error would be like this password policy doesn't yes, match yes yes or it will be something password policy doesn't adhere to the uh, something you will get that error okay another is... thing uh, what i explained like if, if the password complexity are not same at both the ends target server and Mm. yep that yeah, is or that is or that could be also one of the reason but as i said i think i explained it after 5 days it's able to change the password again 6th uh, day it is failing okay okay so in okay. that case your password complexity will not be involved 
Another is how CPM is changing the password. So two windows always remember it uses the API to connect to windows accounts. And I think uh, in okay. the workflow we have discussed this. So CPM uses the API to connect to the windows account and then running that net use command to change the password of a windows account. If you want to see that command, just go to your uh, platform management and there you will see the uh, windows server local account something uh, there is a platform edit that platform and just go to cpm plugin there you will see a powershell script and the path of that powershell script will be your cpm uh, bin folder only and yes, in the no. bin, bin folder you will have that powershell script and that is a very small script it will be something net use and uh, some local or something will be there. Okay, so uh, that's it, uh, guys. These are the uh, some of the questions, and we'll try to conduct more uh, more session in coming days. So we'll update you if I will get more. Nee, can you explain that uh, screen share uh, screen share again? Screen saver is something that is your uh, you are disabling it. Let's say uh, you you are not doing anything on a uh, system, so it will disable your screen. Like it will give you again. You need to provide the password. Then only you will be able to log in. Just like your uh, company's laptop, you might have seen you are not doing anything for after ten to fifteen minutes. It will be lock your screen. Mm -hmm. Same thing, and this is part of your PSM hardening. If you are running the script, uh, so it will automatically disable that screen saver. Okay. So one more question, uh, question number five uh, in the app locker. So after you know whitelisting the path to the XML file app app locker dot XML. So what kind of uh, PowerShell script I have to run? It's there in the same folder. They, the script name is uh, PSM uh, app locker uh, dot PS1. Okay. So that script you just need to run. That's it. Okay. So every time I'm making any change do, to app locker dot XML file, I have to re rerun that script. Yes. Okay. So one more little question uh, near. Uh, I mean, this question is out of from these questions so shadow user uh, basically shadow user uh, in one line definition what we can say it says um, create the isolated session with the le uh, last permissions yeah the you can say uh, the user which is created for the non rdp uh, clients because uh, shadow user is not created for the windows connection for non rdp non rdp means uh, non windows yep like for your Unix and all with the least privilege. So uh, the simple thing is, have you run, uh, let's say you are running a PowerShell, run as administrator and normally running it. So is there a difference? Yes. Because uh, in when... we are running with the administrator, it's having the yes. admin privilege. And when we are yes. running it manually, it's having, don't have that admin privilege. Similar in the case of your shadow user. So it is having least privilege. So your connection is invoked as run as shadow user with the least permission. And session will be isolated. No data leak will be uh, will happen out of that session. And that's the image you can say. It's a shadow of you only. If someone right. will try to hack it, it won't get anything because that doesn't have any uh, permission. Less like you can permissionless weak user yeah okay. weak user correct but uh, in the break glass account also means break glass account is a completely separate concept that is a break glass means everything is down you are using some okay. uh, account and you wanted to let's say your cyber dog is down this so is how you will get the password now? So you have something, some account which can be used in a disaster scenario to log into your machine. So, okay, so, like uh, uh, why we create the shadow user then? 
we don't create it it is created automatically by psm yeah you isolate your session because let's say you are uh, running something with a weak user and same session you are running with a strong user if someone hack that uh, strong user uh, like connection so he can do anything on that machine because he got the strong user but when someone got the weak user he cannot do anything on that machine because that weak user doesn't have any anything any permission on that machine so that's why shadow user concept is there which is used to uh, like your establish your connection to the target machine for the non rdp uh, clients means like decoy sorry decoy decoy like so for mainly shadow user for uh, um, unauthorized persons right not the unauthorized it's the when you just log in and when you will hit the connect button a shell local account this is a local account which gets created on your psm server locally and for every user there will be a different shadow user my question is uh, neil like i'm i'm the user when i uh, connect the server so i'm the full per, like i have a full privileges for the one account okay from uh, psm you are connecting yes so it is not the you it is the shadow user who is taking your connection it's not the you it's the shadow user which is used like he is helping you to just uh, like log into this machine okay okay yep okay so uh, guys uh, i will upload this uh, session uh, on this coming sunday you can watch on youtube also we'll share the link with you and we'll try to conduct more uh, session and Okay. Yeah, near just involve us whenever you will be planning. Yeah, yeah. So uh, sure. I had some uh, new thing about uh, 2019 server. So it, uh, I mean, CyberArk is advising to put these PSM connect and admin users to be a part of domain. Yep. CyberArk is, is not plan? advising. Microsoft doesn't support uh, the uh, more than one hour connection for a local user. so that's why you need to have your psm connect and admin connect the domain user otherwise it will not uh, support more than one hour connection okay yep thank you okay so uh, thank you guys and please practice we'll conduct again uh, one more mock session any like only one question yes santosh yes uh, like uh, how to configure multiple psms uh, near how to load balance like uh, in which where we need to configure so uh, your load balancer thing you will find under your administration tab only you will go to your administration tab go to options there is something privileged session management and under that you will find something configure psm servers so by default there is one uh, parameter there you just need to duplicate that and after duplicating it it will uh, ask you to provide the ip so there you need to provide the ip of your uh, what we say uh, your load balancer or you can provide the fqdn also and the port number also you can provide so generally 3389 is being used for your load balancer also but if you have a different port so you can provide that and also it will ask you for the psm server id and psm object which will be used to connect to your load balancer so that also you need to provide and same your object you need to update in your uh, that uh, uh, the what we have the main configuration of psm it's uh, basic psm.ini there you need to update and rest of the setting will be done on your load balancer side and also one more thing you need to have a certificate like and that certificate should have the trusted relation between your load balancer and the psm and rest of the settings will be done on your load balancer on the load balancer side they will create a pool for psm they will create a rdp pool for pwa your http pools are created in the rdp pool they will just add your psm list of psm servers and on the basis of then that's it when and when and uh, and also one thing you need to use that uh, 
PSM ID, the PSM LB ID, which you have configured under administration tab. That ID should be placed to every platform. If you will edit the platform, there is a, a privilege session management tab is there. So you will click it. You will find by default the uh, PSM server ID you will find there. So you need to remove that PSM server and just place your PSM uh, load balancer ID, which you have configured under administration tab. And then just restart your PSM services. And then you can try to uh, take the connection. It will first it will go to your load balancer. And on the basis of uh, your uh, routing algorithm, it will distribute the traffic among your PSM. And generally, we have the least connection algorithm on the load balancer. So that's so same, your same kind of uh, load balancing configuration we do for the PWA. Uh, no, no. For the PWA, you need to add one parameter in the web.config file. So there is a parameter something load address, load balancer address something I don't remember the exact. So you just need to add that parameter in the web.config file and the same certificate. You need to have a trusted connection between your uh, PWW and the load balancer and that's it. Reset the IS and rest of the settings will be done on your uh, what we say work teams and yes, yes, load balancer team. And also what you can do in the IS, we have some HTTP redirection. So in the HTTP redirection, you can provide your load balancer URL only. So anyone who is hitting any URL, it will automatically redirect to the load balancer URL only. Got it. That can so be done on your uh, <laughs> HTTP redirection. Yep. Got it. Okay. So thank you guys. And